All my life, I felt like this world was not mine. As a child, I even felt like an alien visitor visiting from another world. You might ask yourself, how can this possibly be? We're all obviously from planet Earth, right? Well, my explanation is rather simple. You see, I was taught as a child that only typical girls and boys are allowed to exist and that we are all defined by our birth certificates. I was given a clear message that if I did not abide to these rules, that I'd become an outcast, that my mere existence had become too controversial. I would later find out that I'm sadly not alone in feeling subhuman and like an alien visitor. There are many among us. My body, my experience, my culture is very different than most of yours. I simply ask that you listen with care, open up your heart, and open up your mind, and learn about how I became an intersex man. I was born into a body that did not conform to the ideals of what Earth claims creates a male or a female body. That's because I was born intersex. The United Nations statistic indicates that 1.7% of the world population is born intersex. If the world population is currently at 7.6 billion people, this would mean that 129 million people are born intersex. This means we're as common as people with red hair. We used to be called hermaphrodites. We have walked among you since the first humans have walked the earth. It wouldn't be until the late 1800s that the medical complex creates sex being only male and female. And at our birth, we'd now only be given two choices. Let me explain two terms for you here. An endosex person has sex characteristics that are typical for a female or male body. In contrast, an intersex person has chromosomes, genitals, hormones, and a reproductive system that are a mix of both in some way. XX typically creates a female body, and XY typically creates a male body. However, that's only part of the story. With some intersex variations, XX can now create an intersex male, and XY can create an intersex female. There are many ways an intersex person could be born intersex. To me, gender is a personal thing and an internal feeling that I have inside of myself. My gender identity has nothing to do with my chromosomes or my genitals. An intersex person could be any gender identity. We could be a man, a woman. We could be both or neither. We could have any sexual orientation, too. We could be straight. We could be gay. We could be bisexual and all the other ways to describe that. We could also have any gender expression. That's the way we dress and the way we act. My intersex friend, Dr. Tiger DeVore, likes to call this our gender performance. I like to call myself an intersex, nonconforming, androgynous gay man. <laughs> I also like to say that when you've met one intersex person, you've met one intersex person. <laughs> if you're like most of us in your sixth grade sex education class, you were given material that showed you typical male and female anatomy. What you and I both didn't get to see were all the variations in between. So today I'm going to give you the rest of the story. This is the Prater scale, and it shows you just some of the variations that can happen between endosex female and endo endosex male. At my birth, there was no accurate way to document my sex, so they assigned me female. As a little child, I was sent to therapy to be taught that I was truly a girl, and my first thoughts of suicide would be at four years old. I imagine by now that what I'm saying to you goes against everything that you've been taught. Now I'd like you to imagine me as that little boy being taught that their very body and gender identity do not match, that it goes against what everyone believes, and that your very birth certificate supports this error. My husband and I have been together for 29 years now. We have survived six pregnancies, two live births, and we adopted our youngest. I'm going to tell you right now that adopted pregnancy was by far the easiest. 
Like any typical family, we like to go to the beach, we like to feed the ducks at the park, and of course we love Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> My children like to call me a seahorse dad because it's the male seahorse that gives birth. Instead of Mother's Day, we like to celebrate Seahorse Day. <laughs> yes. My intersex friend, Dr. Carrie Costello, who also gave birth, likes to call themselves a gestational father. Here's a painting from the past that touches my heart. This is a painting done by Giuseppe de Rivera of Magdalena Ventura. This person was celebrated as a miracle of nature and a prodigy. If I had been born at this time, I might have been celebrated too, and in many ways would have been given more human rights to exist than I do today. I am one of the few intersex people who was not forced into genital corrective surgery as a child. However, I was harmed by medical interventions, and I've almost died six times now. Believe it or not, this is me in a wheelchair when I had a service dog. I was not doing very good back then, as you can see. I would be declared disabled by Colorado and Florida and without a denial. You know you're in trouble when you don't get a denial. Everyone gets a denial. But I rehabilitate myself with the help of new safe doctors and new true friends. It would take me, yes, <laughs> thank you. It takes me to the age of 46 years old to become who I truly am. When I emancipated my true gender identity to Mel, I was treated like a transgender person, and I was diagnosed with gender dysphoria when I don't have gender dysphoria. You see, I don't feel like I'm in the wrong body. But as you can imagine by now, I do feel like I'm on the wrong planet. I would like to call this instead cultural dysphoria. Everything changed for me and my family when I emancipated my true gender identity. We faced prejudice. We were unwelcomed by our church. We had problems finding safe doctors. I was unfriended by countless friends. And we were abandoned by most of our family. I had to learn to erase the bad things I'd been called all my life. My three intersex friends, Dr. Tiger DeVore, Brian, and Pigeon Pagonis, were violated in a different way than me with the four top intersex corrective surgeries being surgeries to create a boy that can stand to pee, surgeries that amputate or cut down the size of a clitoris that's deemed too big, surgeries that deal with a penis that's supposedly too small, removing gonads, testicles, or ovaries that supposedly don't belong. All three of my friends were violated as non-consenting children to these surgeries. Tiger DeVore is up to 27 surgeries, correcting the mistakes that doctors have made when he never needed surgery at all. His first surgery starting in infancy. All three of my friends now wish they had the genitals they were born with. If this isn't bad enough, some genetic experts now suggest that an intersex fetus be aborted or that the intersex child be sterilized. I would say that's a pretty good argument for eugenics and genocide. Here's my friend, an XY intersex girl, on accident or on mis by a mistake, turned into a male baby with surgery. With her form of intersex, this child will never look like a boy. She will always be an intersex girl. She is now being given the gift of self-determination from her parents and often works with me to make intersex awareness. All this suffering happening because Earth has only two choices, pink or blue. At this time, only three countries in our world protect children from these unnecessary cosmetic genital surgeries, that being Malta, Chile, in Portugal. In August, California came to a resolution 
condemning these life-altering surgeries done on intersex children. However, nowhere in the United States yet is it illegal to do these surgeries and to protect these intersex children. At my birth, my biological sex was diagnosed. But all this has begun to change. My friends Sarah Kelly Keenan and Hita Valori are the first two and in New York City to be granted an intersex birth certificate. <laughs> yes. Yes. In 2017, I proved to Florida court that my true biological sex is intersex and not a disorder. This September 17th, I proved to my birth state, Colorado, that my true biological sex is intersex, and I received the first intersex birth certificate for that state. Thank you. Now every child in Colorado and every intersex child and every intersex adult can now have this option if they want it. The UN High Commissioner of Human Rights states, far too few of us are aware of the specific human rights violations faced by millions of intersex people because their bodies don't comply to typical definitions of male and female. Intersex children and adults are frequently subjected to forced sterilizations and irreversible surgery and suffer discrimination in schools, workplaces, and other settings. These 10 human rights organizations and many more all say that it is time to stop these unnecessary cosmetic surgeries and give the child the self-determination of their own personal gender identity and to let them grow up and to decide whether or not they need surgery or not. Tiger DeVore says to those who are in power and control, don't make this mistake again. Don't do this to some innocent child. Don't take from them what doesn't need to be taken from them. This is our future, that our intersex births be celebrated again. This is our future, that my world becomes your world, and that your world can now become our world. That what's between the legs stops being the determining factor of our gender identity, whom we should love, and how we should all dress. That each and every one of us gets the self-determination over our own gender identity, and that we can all become free and equal. This is our future, that this gender binary ideal end that the truth be told now. No one should feel like they don't belong to their own world. Help us end cultural dysphoria. We exist. We are real, and yes, we are human. Thank you.